until he done with me. They ain't gonna come for me until he done with me. Come for me until he done with me. They ain't gonna come for me until he done with me. Come for me until he done with me. They ain't gonna come for me until he done with me. Come, come, come for me until come, come, come for me until. Welcome to the Hip Hop Report, your go-to podcast for all things hip hop. I'm your host, Trey G, and I'll be taking you on a journey through the latest news, hottest tracks, and freshest trends in the world of hip hop. Whether you're a diehard fan or just getting into the genre, this podcast is for you. From in-depth interviews with industry insiders to reviews of the newest albums and discussions on the culture shaping the scene, we've got it all covered right here. They ain't gonna come for me until he done with me. You know, um, one thing that, uh, that I can't seem to understand is how, uh, we are so at odds with each other when it comes to politics in a political arena. Um, you know, over the course of years, I think in a lot of ways, we have become desensitized to a lot of things, you know, and that's just, I'm really speaking a lot from my experience, um, some from the experience of others, but in most cases, my experience is growing up and watching how things used to be to how they are now. Um, I think over the, you know, over the course of time, uh, people as as a whole, white people, black people, brown, whatever, you know, um, we have become desensitized to a lot of things that we used to be real sensitive to. And I, I want to make one example. One example is I remember growing up and watching the news right unconsciously because you know as a kid you really not paying attention to or caring about the news but you unconsciously watching it because you were around your parents playing or whatever the case right and i remember that um you never used to hear cuss words on the news like you ne- like if it was a murder or or you know some type of violent crime it was spoken about but it was still uh protected right so it was more so like a rated pg type of thing like they would speak about it but in a a family friendly way now and you know what even even referring back to to those times i could almost remember the first time that i heard a curse word on the news right in in not only heard it but just looked at the expressions of the people who were around me at that time also myself um i can also remember um the first time when you seen a dead body on the news you know what i mean or you know what i mean just like the image of a dead body right off in the in the distance laying on the ground like that stuff used to be blurred out. It was never shown before, you know. And then I remember the first time I seen it shown on the news, you know, like a, you know, like them just doing a, 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 a you know, view over or whatever the case of the body. It, it was never shown without it being a blur. You feel what I'm saying? But then, um, you know, you look at the school shootings, right? back in the days where you didn't have to worry about sending your kids to school and they got shot now you extremely worried about that you know what i mean and it it always gets closer to home no matter where you live at you got a, a child or you got a niece or a nephew or a little brother or sister you know what i mean in school somewhere and it get closer to home every time you know started i believe with columbine and now it's just almost like a trend and i think that you know we as a whole raise up for a lot of things man like we raise it and, and a lot of the stuff is very very valid to take a stand against 
But one thing I don't feel like we really take a stand against is school shootings. You know what I mean? Like, as a parent, if my child is in school, I am terrified of one day getting a call. You know what I mean? Saying that something bad at their school happened because now I know that it's, you know, very possible. I Now I know that it's a lot closer to home. So I take it a lot more serious. A lot of times we don't take things serious until it happened to us. And I think that that's a grave mistake as well, you know. So when you look at it, all these factors, man, and the fact that, you know, even when even from just this standpoint, right, of like, let's go to politics for a second. So I don't like to pick sides when it comes to politics because I've always felt the president has never been in the best interest of everybody, um, you know, so. I really don't be caring, but then I do because I understand that politics and understanding how it works. You know, it's a chess match and, it, and politics run and rule the world and it makes laws and breaks laws and all kind of shit. But at the end of the day, um, it's something that we all should be um, a part of is the p political spectrum, the political arena of life period um politics should almost be a part of life like religion is to most people you know what i mean you shouldn't say that you will get into religion without saying that you will get into politics and try to understand that as well because it's a very important part of everybody's life so you know i honestly feel like politics should go hand to hand just like religion do you know at the end of the day um you know, and this is one of the main reasons why, you know, when I think about, the, you know, the political uh, things that are coming up, like voting for a new president, um, I, I, I look at not only a president's plan, right, um, even though, I mean, they could be just saying something, you know. It's, I'm still looking for it to make sense at the end of the day. They can be lying. They can be a great liar. And it's nothing you can really do. You can just go with the best option. Um, you know, but the the thing that I look at is the fact that, you know, Donald Trump, I feel like he just for really not nobody. He's more of a entertainer, right? A rich entertainer. And he using the political arena for his entertainment that's it like i'm i'm pretty sure he even surprised he became the president he even surprised he actually became the president he like these motherfuckers pick me oh i'm gonna have fun with it then you know that's just how i feel with him with his whole approach and you know his ideas the things that he talk about you know he's so disrespectful with so many different people, different positions. And I think that that is important. I think that, yeah, you shouldn't disrespect certain people, man. Like, that should just come with it. Like, you should be a president that regardless of what your ideology is or how you feel about certain things, it should be a certain way that you handle that approach being in the highest office in the land, right? Because it's, being a president is more than being a celebrity. At the end of the day, you have not only certain people looking up to you, you have the world looking up to you, you know, looking up to you to make good on their futures, their individual futures. You know what I mean? Um, and when you fail that in the way that he fails it, the way that he the way his approach is, I just totally don't agree with it. It's like grumpy old men. You know what I mean? Like, you don't want to be around that. Like, that's bad energy. And that's what he displays is a lot of bad energy, which is why, you know, I go against him. It don't even make me want to listen to his policies or listen to his ideologies, because at the end of the day, your approach is terrible. You know, the, 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 the way that you conduct yourself being a grown man, not even a president, but just being a grown man alone. Is disturbing and that's the reason why you know I don't even care about the policies because you know 
it, it's just the way that, especially when you're president of the United States, you should carry yourself. I'm real big on that, right? We big on how we carry ourselves as individual people. We big on how we carry ourselves as celebrities. We big on how we carry ourselves in any way. So when you're in the highest office of the land, you should have the most. You should, I don't care who you don't like. You still have a respectful approach to how you don't like that person. I love a person who know how to articulate their anger in, in a way where you can't even say nothing. You can't even get mad. You can't do nothing but respect it. You know what I mean? So when I look at people like Kamala Harris, that's what she does. She knows, yeah, she, 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 I, I'm pretty sure she can get black girl angry on him, on him and get to talking real, real crazy. But it's the way that she articulate her anger, which makes me look up to her and be like, yeah, I like that approach. That's presidential right there. That's how you handle this. You know what I mean? You speak truth to power, but at the same time, be respectful with it, though. You know, it's all about approach at the end of the day. You have to definitely articulate yourself. But all of these little things that they try to nitpick with, right? like she don't take uh, enough um, interviews, which I agree with them. She don't. It's like she don't um, go into specifics about her plans, which she don't. And I agree with them. But I still don't. But I still think that she can do what she want to do. She, this is her plan. If she go along with what they want her to do, then she basically moving at their drum. She moving at the beat of their drum. So let her move how she want to move. She's winning doing it like that. So why is they mad about why she not doing something else, right? Because they want to nitpick when it comes to. Her plan, they want her to be specific, but when it comes to Donald Trump's plan, they don't even try to push back on the fact that he don't have a plan. Let's own specifics of, of, the, of a plan. So that's where why I lean towards was right. I don't care about all that other little petty stuff. This happened and these people are here to do that. I don't care about all that stuff, man. I care about where the moment right now and where and where this person who's trying to get into office is trying to move us forward. You understand that? So all that other petty stuff somebody did 10 years ago or said 10 years, I do not care about none of that stuff. Literally. You know, def it definitely, like especially if you're speaking on some racist terms, Anything racist sticks to me if you said it 10 years ago. But but if you had something like a policy change, right? So say, for instance, you may have, you know, it, it may have been this situation. Like, let's, let's make an example with the fracking, right? Right? Like, initially, you know, when, when she did the research and what she knew on fracking, yeah, at that time, it was probably more so of a, you know, let's get rid of this and let's implement this. But then, over you know, over time when she learned more about it and, you know, went to go and see people who did it and things like that, um, maybe, she, you know, it, it could have been different laws that changed within that. You know what I mean? To where, yeah, her policy shifted, that people do that. They shift policies. We change our minds all the time. This is a human thing. It ain't even just a presidential thing because as a president – or as a uh, state's leader or whatever you're trying to be, you have to make those decisions. You may think that one way today and next month you may think another way, right? Because you may have learned new things or things may have shifted within that, within that spectrum of whatever it is, you know, that you were creating a policy or, or agreeing with the policy on or disagreeing with it on. You know what I mean? So, you know, those little petty nitpicking things to me is just stuff that people use um, for, you know, campaign smearing at the end of the day. You know, it's not nothing that that factors into anything based on how I look at things like that's even, for instance, with the border. You know what I mean? Like, OK, they want to say she's a border czar, this, this and that. That's fine. Right. But then my thing is this, if it is so many problems at the border that they can actually come up with real things to talk about that's actually going on at the border. 
right? But when you call somebody your borders are, me as as a person, right? Because I want to understand what the hell a borders are even is. I, I like to go and Google things that I don't know about, but then I get to Google and stuff and find out that there's no such thing as a borders are. That's a lie to me. So why do I, why do, first of all, you lying about what a person is. You don't have to do that because you have real issues to actually speak about that I can go and fi- find out and be like, yeah, they, they write about this. But then you use a lie to get me there. And that right there is, is based on false pretense. So I'm not taking anything you say incredible based on that. It's the same way with her. When she's saying something, I'm going to I'm going to Google this. I'm going to verify it somewhere. I'm not just believing what she's saying either. But when I catch you in a thousand lies and I can't even catch her in one, come on. Who the hell I'm going to go with? I'm not dumb. I don't care, bro. I'm not going to sit here and base my life on somebody who is celebrity, who rich, who who, who I know is doing this for ill intentions on somebody who I know can at least enact some type of change, who at least have compassion, has empathy, has a heart. You understand what I'm saying? Well, we can mold her until we, we need her to be as a human, a, a, as an American. You know what I mean? We can we can do that. We can we can get her to 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 do certain things uh you know political uh, policy wise whatever the case is but the thing is we it has to be somebody from that type of realm like trump don't even have feelings for anything man he don't care about anything unless it's trump and that's what i have learned over the years that's what i have seen character wise you know what i mean so this is stuff I'm basing off of what off of my own research of this guy, off of my own, you know, image of of him just doing certain things and saying certain things to people. It's like, bro, like, come on, bro, you the president, bro. Like, you know, there's people around the world looking at this like America goofy as hell. That's how I feel like they what they saying. Like they got Donald Trump in office. Oh, yeah, we're going to use this guy. You know what I mean? We're going to use him. And there's so many people who used dude that is crazy. He don't even know. You know what I'm saying? And, and it, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we have become desensitized to a lot of things, man. And I think that we need to get on track with um, just understanding that we all here together. We got to live on the same planet. We got to breathe the same air. We got to all shop at the same grocery stores, right? We got to go to the same doctors, all of that. Nobody gets a all or only whites doctor or only blacks doctor, none, none of that. We all got to be here together living, man. So we have to understand that, you know, even with the social medias and all of these fight videos that go up, on TikTok, all of these videos that just harm people. This is entertainment to us now because we become desensitized. We're not even horrified from it no more. Is we sharing it, right, with our friends because we want everybody to see that that not not from a horror standpoint, but from an entertainment standpoint. And um, I think that need to change. You know, um. Let me know how you feel about it in the comments, though. I appreciate you for tuning in. It's your boy, Trey G, with The Hip Hop Report. Let's get it. That's a wrap for today's episode of The Hip Hop Report. We hope you enjoyed the deep dive into the world of hip hop with us. Don't forget to follow us on social media for more updates, behind the scenes content, and to join the conversation with fellow hip hop enthusiasts. Thank you for tuning in and supporting the culture. Until next time, keep vibing to the rhyme of hip-hop and stay tuned for more dope content on the Hip-Hop Report.